Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Williams. Um, if you would, make sure that your bulletin's nearby, open and ready to read along. But if you're visiting this morning, welcome again. And if you could look at the end of your pew, there should be a little sheet of paper, skinny, slim sheet. has a couple of questions. If you could fill that out, that would be great. We just want a record of your visit. And when you're finished doing that, put it in the golden offering plate. It'll come your way in a few minutes. Um, but there's a couple of announcements um, that aren't in our bulletin, and we have some good-looking folks coming up and making those announcements this morning. One would be Regina and Les and Heather, so y'all can come on up, and then Bill after them, okay? Good morning. Good morning. Um, the first thing that I wanted to mention was... Um, from uh, Jacksonville Christian Outreach every year, we um, we give a report to the church about how school supplies and, and Christmas went. And so, as y'all know, about two weeks ago, we gave out school supplies to um, the uh, 36265 zip code, plus any child that um, was in any district that came in and needed school supplies. We do not turn anybody down for school supplies. Um, Y'all know that getting, getting your kids started in school is expensive, and it's such a, uh, you know, a blessing to the families to get that. All the small children that was in grade school got um, everything on their list, to include a book bag, um, what, anything that was on their list, um, they, they were able to get it. Um, the high school and the junior high kids got a generic bag, and we were blessed this um, year with funds. And in the bag for the high school or the junior high kids, um, they were given things like uh, spiral notebooks, um, composition books, paper, graph paper, dividers, just um, the just general things that that kids need in a high school and they got a really good supply this year probably more than they've ever gotten for high school um, the second thing that I wanted to talk about concerning JCOC um, well I left one thing out I'm supposed to tell you at this point we have served somewhere around 250 um, either kids or high school or our junior high kids received school supplies. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is once a month, um, I am um, helping in the pantry now, and um, this time um, Heather was with me, and so she helped me. And um, I just wanted to read just one um, um, verse. Um, um, and just remind you what Jesus said um, about what we do at JCOC. Um, Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you in the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you, you invited me in. I was sick and you looked after me. I'll stop right there and say I don't know if you know that JCOC provides for dental. They, divide, they, get, they give gas to get to the doctor, um, uh, things like that. So um, that part, and um, then the righteous will answer the Lord. When did you see me hungry and feed you or thirsty and give me something to, to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or you needed clothes and clothes to you. When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? Um, the um, pantry right now is low. There's a lot of hungry people out there. There was a drive done every year from uh, that uh, the Postal Service does and picks up food, and I'm sure y'all participate in that. That food is gone. It usually lasts for a pretty good while, but it's gone. So the Crusaders, and most of you know the Crusaders, we're going to decorate up some trash cans. This was Chris's suggestion. And they're going to be around the church. And if you've got something in your pantry, and ch please check the date, 
make sure it's still in date, and drop it in those, uh, those trash cans and, um, or containers of some kind, and we'll take it down to JCOC and we'll, we'll abide by this verse. Um, I wanted Heather to say something because she saw it and um, trying to get her out of her shyness, so. <laughs> I was there and we need food. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Whose idea was it for me to follow that act? Uh, I, I want to piggyback on what they said. Uh, first of all, this Thursday night, 6 o'clock, is uh, Spirit on Mountain Street. Uh, I'm sure most of you have been to one of them, but uh, I, I had about an hour-long conversation with Mary Agnes, the director, yesterday. And, and uh, this year, there's going to be twice as many food vendors. Uh, there, there, there really will be a cake auction. I, I got screwed up last year. Uh, there will be a kids' zone for the kids. Uh, uh, pep rallies in the stadium. I, I, I was told that uh, Pleasant Valley's uh, band is going to be there. The cheerleaders are going to be there, as well as Jacksonville and, and uh, Jacksonville Christian. So uh, this is a very important thing for JCOC because all the proceeds go to JCOC for Christmas. And uh, if you've ever... If you've been up there when we were running Toyland, you'll understand that we need lots and lots and lots of money and toys. Uh, but uh, all those profits go to JCOC. The other thing, <coughs> um, we need, I need a volunteer to bake a cake for the cake auction uh, this Thursday before I pick somebody. Anybody volunteer to make a cake for that? Hello? Anybody back here? Patsy will do. Thank you. Do we need more than one? Huh? Yeah, we can do a dozen. I mean, we we'll do just one. Okay. All right. Uh, outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, I work uh, JCOC several days a month at the front desk, and uh, so far this year, we've added 48 new families. Uh, so uh, what they said is true. We, we, we really do need food, and uh, hopefully this, what I'm doing right now is going on in the other 21 churches in our JCOC today. But anyway, I know our church uh, uh, is always leading the way, and uh, please, please help us fill up those barrels. And if you don't want to do that and you just want to give money, We'll take that, too. Uh, you can drop a check off JCOC, or you can get it to me or Gina, and, and we'll just make it out to JCOC, and uh, we can use those funds. The last thing I want to do is I want to ask a question. How many people in here know, don't know what JCOC stands for? Anybody? Huh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Not to be repetitive, but good morning. I want to thank everyone that helped out this past Wednesday uh, for our dinners. Uh, it was a very big success. We had approximately 91 meals served. Uh, out of this, every meal that is paid for, 50 cents of it goes to the Crusader class. And I believe you know uh, the individuals in that. Uh, moving forward, the uh, Wednesday night this week, will be uh, lasagna, salad, garlic bread, chocolate cake, and ice cream. Uh, Deb English will be heading up this team, so uh, her teammates, please uh, join in with her. And if anyone wants to be added to the list or taken off that was on last week's list, please give me a call. My number's in the bulletin. Uh, or you could uh, call the church if you cannot reach me. Also, Friday... We will have the, uh, begin our football breakfast for the uh, athletes at uh, Pleasant Valley School, and we'll do it also again the following week. Anyone interested in helping out with this, I'd appreciate it. We get here about 5.15 in the morning on Friday, and we will serve these uh, individual students at 7 o'clock. Remember, everyone that has a student ID that is a student at JSU, on Wednesday nights, your meals uh, come with your ID. There is no charge for it, so this is something that we're offering uh, through the uh, program that we have at uh, JSU. 
That's all that you get from me today. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to highlight two of the announcements. If you notice in your bulletin when you open it, there's an insert. It says Deacon Nomination Form. That needs to be filled out either this Sunday or next. But it's important that you read the directions and that you don't put someone's name down that you haven't spoken to yet. Okay? That's very important. So just read over that information in the bulletin as well. And then there's a daycare yard sale going on this Saturday. So read the details about that. If you have some stuff you would like to give away and donate, they need it. They need uh, this as a fundraiser, okay? So there's some information to read about, about that as well. All right, there's been just too long of sitting without some Williams loving going on. So you need to look around and find someone that you have not hugged this morning, kissed on the cheek, or shook their hand and go for it, okay? Y'all about to uh, make me have to pull out the teacher voice so y'all sit down. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, today's scripture call of worship comes from Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 29. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone hide in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name, just as their fathers forgot my name during the ball worship. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what he has drawn, or for, for what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? And if you haven't noticed, Chris is not here this morning. He will be absent today and next Sunday. He's going to another part of the world. So please keep him in your prayers as he is gone. But... We have Miss Terry here this morning, Miss Terry Bird, which is great. And the name of her sermon is Happy, which is perfect for her and for us. So exciting that you're here. Um, but we're going to start the service off with a word of prayer. So if you would please pray with me. Precious Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this awesome day. We thank you for this amazing place that we can come and worship you and fellowship with one another. I thank you for each person here this morning, but I also pray for those that were not able to come. Either they may be sick or just have some reason that they cannot be here, and we just ask that you be with them this morning. And may your presence be felt and be known this morning as you open our ears to whatever we may hear and open our hearts and our minds to however we may be feeling this morning. And Father, please change us so that we may be the good. In your name we pray. Amen. You want to take your hymn this morning and turn to uh, Chorus 102. There's something about that name. Let's stand as we sing.
10 this morning is 106. Praise him, praise him. We'll sing all three stanzas. How are you guys doing today? <coughs> Would you say that you guys are, I like those flip flops, those are awesome. Would you say that you guys are happy today? Well, I saw the name of the sermon today, the name of the sermon is happy, and I was like, I wonder what I can talk about that would be happy. Yeah, and that's one of them. Okay, and um, so I was trying to think of all the things that make me happy. What are the things that make you guys happy? Toys. Toys make you happy? Dogs make you happy? What else? My cat. Your cat? <laughs> you Xbox. Xbox makes you happy? Do your parents, <laughs> your parents ever make you happy? I have Xbox. You have an Xbox? <laughs> awesome. I have Xbox at my home. Cool. Nothing? Do your grandparents ever make you happy? Really happy. Yeah. Now, what are some of the things you do when you're happy? Play. You play? Like? Um, let's see. I play video games. You play video games? What happens to your face when you're happy? Can you show me? I think he always loves me because I do this. What do you guys look like when you're happy? You look smug. Good job. Now, I think one of the things that makes me really happy is when someone 
uh, tells me or shows me that they love me. Does that make you guys happy? Someone gives you something because they love you or they tell you how great you're doing. And one of the things that makes me really happy is knowing how much God loves me. You know that God loves each and every one of us, right? Uh-huh. And he also knows our names. And he knows our names. Do you know that he not only loves us, he loves everybody in the world? No matter where they live, no matter um, what they, they look. And yeah, he even likes grumpy people. <laughs> Isn't he crazy? He loves us all very much. And that should make us happy, right? To know that God loves us. And I think there are really two things that make us, one, two things that make us really happy. One is when someone gives us something, right? Like when they give us a present or something. Doesn't that make us happy? Do you like getting stuff? Because that just kind of says, I love you and I want to give you something. And the other is when we're able to give someone else something. And we can tell them how much we love them, right? When you guys tell your parents you love them, do they smile? Does that make them happy? So I thought what we do today is we have two, I'm ha- I've got two things I'm going to give you. And one of them is for you, for later, <laughs> not for now. And then another one is something that I want you to give away, okay? So first I'm going to show you. This is what I want you to give away. This is a little heart. <coughs> and I want you to give this to somebody. But first I want you to draw on there or make a picture or a word or something that says why you love them and see if you can make them happy, okay? Can you guys do that? Does that make sense? I made one today, and I made it for um, Miss Marleya. Do you know why? She makes me very happy. And one of the things she does is she plays the ukulele. You guys know what the ukulele is? Yeah. And I was, you like it when she sings, don't you? And so I drew a, little, a bad little picture of a ukulele and I gave it to her. <laughs> to it. So if you can think of something for your parents or grandparents or sisters or brothers that makes you happy about them, you can draw it on there and give it to them, okay? This is the other thing I want to give you. Because I like making all the parents happy. <laughs> And I heard that you guys were out of these upstairs. Dum dums. Dum dums. <laughs> 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 Take one. Mystery. Yeah. 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 I got a mystery dog. Yeah. Yeah. You want a present? Okay. Yeah. Everybody get one? Uh, you want that one? Uh, Alright, awesome. Yeah. Alright, so remember, you give put the, the rest of those upstairs. I will put the rest of these upstairs. <laughs> Alright, so remember. That when, when someone gives you something, someone tells you they love you. And you can do that for someone else. It makes them happy, okay? So we're going to do that with your hearts. All right, now there's no children's church today, okay? So you guys are going to, the big kids are going to go back and sit with your parents. Threes and fours, you're with me, okay? All right? Thank you, guys. You can head back to your seats. Our hymn this morning is 563, Count Your Blessings. Certainly we are blessed to stand and sing the first, second, and fourth. First, second, and fourth.
gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today for all that you have provided to us. For the opportunities that we've had going forth into a new year for the students and for the teachers that have already begun. We ask you, Father, that we return unto you that which is already yours. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. the sermon today happy and the name of that song is wouldn't take nothing for my journey now that's kind of a song of contentment so it goes right along with the service stand for the doxology praise god from
Wow, that was fantastic, wasn't it? I love coming here. It just makes me happy, and you guys have totally bought into that theme today. So I am delighted to be with you again. For those of you who are new friends who don't know me, I'm Terry Bird. I'm the coordinator of the Alabama Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, and your church is such a great friend to us. And I just want to give you a little update because you guys gave to the Alabama CBF state mission offering this year. And I wanted to tell you just a couple of places that that offering is gone. First of all, we were able to scholarship four young ministers heading off to seminary for the first time this year. And um, normally our scholarships go to um, students but they might be in different places. And this year, all four of them were starting their first year of either their master's or their doctorate work. So that's really exciting. Also, you guys know about Sowing Seeds of Hope, our rural poverty initiative in Perry County. And this summer, we did a lot of work in Perry County and gave a lot of funds to Sowing Seeds of Hope. But one thing that the offering did specifically is we found out that the Head Start program wasn't gonna be able to start school on time because their building wasn't finished. So we were able to contact some churches who had actually already been to Perry County this summer, and we were able to give the money for the supplies for the building to be finished, and the little children were able to start the Head Start program on time, thanks to the gifts that came from Alabama CBF. So thank you so much for your dedication to missions and all that you do in partnership with us. I am just eternally grateful for your love and for your support. And wow, just the announcements today showcased what a great missional church you are and how you live your life of following Jesus outside the walls of this building. And I'm incredibly grateful. Our scripture today comes to us from Psalm 84. I invite you to turn there. And depending on your um, translation, you may have the word happy there more times than is happy in my translation today, but I'm going to be reading to you from the NRSV, Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs, the early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord, a God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the faces of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Let us pray. Lord God, we love you and are so thankful to be in this place today, in this temple, in this court of worship. And we are happy, Lord, to know that you are with us. We ask that you open our hearts and open our minds to hearing a new good word from you this day. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray. Amen. In 2014, just last year, the number one song of the year as documented by Billboard Music was Happy by Pharrell Williams. It hit number one in 24 countries. 
won a Grammy for Best Music Video of the Year. It also had a Grammy nomination for Song of the Year. It was the best-selling song of the year in the U.S. and the most downloaded song of all time in the U.K. On YouTube, Farrell's video has over 710,750,000 views. Kira Kazantsev won the Miss America pageant last year with a rendition of Happy. And these are the lyrics. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine's here, you can take a break. I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space with the air like I don't care, baby, all the way because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Clap along because I'm happy if you know that what happiness is to you because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Do you find it surprising that in this day and time, with all that's going on in the world, that a song about happiness is a song that resonates not only with people in America, but all over the world? That the number one video of last year is a video with people of all ages, sizes, and colors, including a church choir, dancing to those happy lyrics and a joyful rhythm, smiling and singing together, I'm not. I think that the people of the world are hungry for happiness and even deeper joy. Today in our scripture passage, our psalm writer, who we think is David, writes and sings about the joy and happiness found in God and in God's presence. Psalm 84 is a celebration of the temple as the dwelling place of God. The psalm speaks of traveling to the temple in Jerusalem and of the awesome experience of entering into that holy place. There was nothing that quite compared for the Jewish people with the temple as the place that God had chosen to be present to his people in power and in might. The psalm was obviously spoken and sung by pilgrims who sought God, who desired the presence of the Lord. The temple was a place to come home to. We read story after story in the Bible of people making their way to the temple in Jerusalem, even multiple stories about Jesus and his disciples traveling together to Jerusalem to go to the temple. One travel writer speaking about the Jerusalem of today wrote, everyone comes home to Jerusalem. In verse 3, we are reminded that in the temple I meet my God and my King. A double title which refers both to the ultimate power of the universe and the personal center of our lives today. An experience in the temple could be both overwhelming and intensely personal. This psalm was a reminder that God would meet Israel in a particular place and it would bring them great joy. Today, it is a reminder that God meets us here in this place. When we come together as a fellowship of Jesus followers, it should bring us joy. It should make us happy. And the joy of our worship should inspire us to bring joy and happiness to others. This is the first truth that we gain from understanding this psalm today. A second truth is that the presence of God is found in this place, inside these walls, but not only here, also in the other sacred spaces of our lives. Some of those sacred spaces come to us, and some of them we need to create. My husband, Paul, is a pediatric chaplain on the oncology unit of Children's Hospital in Birmingham. I have heard him say many times that he walks with families during the most 
sacred spaces of their lives, like when we enter the world and when we leave it, like when we face our deepest fears and are witnesses to the greatest miracles. The psalmist says that we gain strength in these places. In verses 6 and 7, the psalmist writes, as they go through the valley of Baca, which is translated the Valley of Tears. They make it a place of springs. Their tears spring up into places of strength. The early rain covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength to strength. As we encounter the places in our lives where God walks with us through the Valley of Tears, God becomes our strength and helps us build within us the places where we are sustained and find courage in the sacred spaces that come to us simply because we are human. But there is also a need to find and create sacred spaces. In her book, An Altar in the World, Barbara Brown Taylor tells the story of being on a walk in Hawaii. As she walks, she goes to a place that is not a touristy place. It's a very quiet place, possibly a place that people hadn't been to for many, many years. And she makes a path along a space in the grass that is a little bit worn, like maybe someone has been there before. And as she walks along this path above on a high cliff where she can see the waves crashing below, the path eventually steers off into a quiet place away from the edge. And she is surprised when she comes to a pool in the middle of a wilderness. And everything gets really quiet. As she walks along the pool, she comes to a place on the ground where she discovers four rocks that have been set up straight and tall, side by side, placed together. And she realized she has found an altar in the world. Sometimes we come to holy places and we create them ourselves. Our psalm writer today longs for God, even faints with the need for the presence of God. Our psalmist says that even the birds desire to build nests in the eaves of the holy places. I was on retreat once where we were encouraged to go back home and create a sacred space where we could be reminded of God's presence and God's movement in our lives. A place to pray, to sing, to sit, to read, even nap with the awareness of being in God's presence. For some of us, that is an outdoor place where we can find the quiet we need in order to see and hear God's presence in nature, where we can find a stone, an altar unto the Lord in our world. When I went to this retreat, I lived in Florida at the time, and so I went back home to my little house in Florida, and I created a place in my home. I had a chair in my sunroom where I could feel the warmth of the sun on my face when I prayed or read the Bible. Beside the chair, I placed a little table for a glass of water or pictures of my family, my prayer journal, and a soft throw for napping. My children were small at the time, and they used to say, that's Mama's chair. And they knew that that was where I prayed for them and read my Bible. Making space for God in our lives brings us joy, not only in the good times, but in times when we need to find strength for the journey. Most importantly, happiness should be a product of a life engaged in the worship of God. Our psalmist declares that the Lord God is like the sun, shining down with favor on those who walk with God. 
that one day in the presence of God is better than a thousand days anywhere else. Happy are those who trust in God. Which leads us to our final truth, which may seem pretty basic, but it is also profound. When you walk in these doors and see these people, do you radiate with happiness? When you meet people wherever you go, do they think that you glow with joy? When you think of your faith and your Christian life, are you thinking about how you can bless others? When confronted with people who are very different from you, do you find yourself pondering, how do I create love and joy between the two of us when we are so different? When someone mentions your name, do people say that they love the way you bring joy and happiness into a room? If we are all that way, then why is it that so many people in our world find Christian people to be judgmental or unkind or confrontational? You've heard it said before, I like Jesus, but Christians? Not so much. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't believe that this scripture is encouraging a fake happy face in every situation, pretending that you're not sick or sad or in need of help. In fact, our scripture today talks specifically about journeying through times of tears and struggle. Living through times like these is when we do need strength. And I do believe that it is possible that God desires for us to cultivate an inner joy that comes from continually seeking the presence of God in our lives. An inner strength and joy that recognizes the blessing and gift of the love of God. It's possible that to get there, we may need to let go of something, to let go of a bitterness, a past hurt, a stereotype, a disagreement, or a judgment in order to make ourselves right with God or someone else. Several years ago, my cousin, Tamira, a woman of great love and joy, was having a discussion with her son, who was a young teenager at the time. And they were having a talk about the current attitude he had been exhibiting, which was not joy. And with frustration, her son said to her, I am not happy about every little thing in the world and go around with a smile on my face all the time like you. So she responded with the truth. And she said these words, I am not happy about every little thing in the world. In fact, there are days, moments in every day, when I'm not pleased with how something is going, or I'm sad about how someone is hurting, or deeply distressed about an injustice. But I can say that I do have an underlying joy that I think comes from deep gratitude Although I may be frustrated with you in this moment, I am happy every day of my life that God gave you to me. Although I may be sad that my friend is hurting because of a deep loss in her life, I am filled with joy and gratitude for our friendship and the knowledge that she does not walk this journey alone, but that God is with her. I am deeply angry right now to know that there are people who are treated unjustly or taken advantage of simply because of the color of their skin or their religion or where they live or because they are trapped in poverty. But I do rejoice in knowing that God who loves me deeply and equally loves them. And because I believe that, step by step, Day by day, our actions can help make a difference. This is my cousin who compliments every fast food worker at every drive-through window, who smiles at every person she meets, 
who goes out of her way to be helpful to neighbors and to strangers alike, and her, who serves on the prayer team of her church and greets everyone with a hug. Today, her son, who is now in his mid-twenties, exhibits that same inner Christ-like love and joy. He got the message. So I have a challenge for you today. I want you to think about the places in your life that are not filled with joy and reflect on what you can do to change that. As you think and pray, seek a sacred place or a holy space where you can ask God for the strength to make a positive change in your life or in that situation. Show up gladly in your temple, this place, like a pilgrim on a journey longing to worship. Cultivate your trust in God in such a way that you encourage joy for yourself and for others. And be happy, my friends, praising God and singing songs of joy that all may see Jesus in you. Maybe we will all find ourselves singing our own happy song. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Because I'm happy, clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. Because Jesus, our Lord and Savior, loves you deeply. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, find a well deep within us to help us cultivate the joy that comes from worshiping you. In the name of Christ our Savior, amen. This morning you are invited to respond to the call of God in your life. We are going to stand and sing a hymn together. I will be here at the front if you would like to come for prayer or to join the church, and someone from the church will join me. So um, let us stand and sing a song together. That song is hymn 515, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. We'll sing the first and second stanzas. Lord, thank you so much for the message we heard today, Lord, of the messages of happiness and how we can have happiness, Lord, even though 
there may be things going on in our lives, Lord, just help us to uh, be that example that Terry talked about, that, uh, show that uh, example of, of the joy that we have, although things may be going on. Just pray that you'll be with each one here today as they go their separate ways. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.